What's up friends, this is Ethan from Arch Audio bringing you the secret sauce and this week we are going to talk toms with the Sennheiser MD421 dynamic microphone. I love this microphone. It came out in 1960 sort of to be an all-purpose recording staple and it did its job very well. If you look at the bottom, it has a built-in roll-off filter and you'll see a little M here on the dial and that stands for music. That's the flat side of the filter. As you click over, you'll make your way to a little S that stands for speech. That's the part of the filter that's actually rolled off. And by the time you've made it there, you have ro gradually rolled off six decibels from 500 hertz and below. So it really will give you a little bit more clarity in a vocal situation. Um, this microphone really made a name for itself recording toms. And I think that uh, part of that uh, initial combination that you hear in history is one of these run through like a Focusrite ISA Pre or even like a Focusrite Red Pre. Um, I use this in every drum recording situation with toms that I have and most of the time I use it through one of those pre's and it's not that I don't think that there's other options out there I just think that there is a certain clarity and a certain uh, lushness to the low end that you get from that specific combination and I think that that's why that this microphone has withstood the test of time for that application. Uh, other things it does well, it's amazing for horns, especially like saxophone or trumpet or anything with extremely high sound pressure level output. It handles that very well because it has a built-in pop filter right here, which helps with the air disbursement. Um, another fun fact about the microphone, a lot of people think that you bring your source in this way, sort of like a large diaphragm condenser, but you don't. It's actually meant to be used pointing outward like this. So if you're pointing it at a source, you want to point it at the source from the tip of the mic. Another fun fact is that this clip is very, very sensitive and it will come undone if you hold the mic by the clip. So don't do that. You only want to hold this microphone by the body. If you've been in enough studios over the course of time, you will finally run into one that is wrapped in electric tape with a big crack running down the middle of it. And that's because somebody was unaware and they held it and it fell to the floor and broke. The sick joke of it all is that the microphone is still fine and it works perfectly well. It just has to be taped up. So it's really more of just kind of a bummer than anything else, but it can be an inconvenience, especially if you crack the pop filter. Um, like I said, this microphone is an all-around staple. It's found in just about any professional recording facility that you're going to walk into. Um, it's used on a wide range of sources, everything from, like I said, toms to horns to electric guitars to vocals. I don't usually use it for a room mic. I would recommend mostly close micing with this. Uh, it's going to do a really good job of just capturing a very upfront sound and it can be colored by preamps very well. So you're gonna get a lot of different, very colorful and, and clear, high quality results out of this mic. And uh, that's why I think it's worth having in the locker. If you've never tried one, come down and try it out. It will change your perspective on high-end dynamic microphones. Um, yeah. Sennheiser MD421 dynamic mic. Great choice. Love you guys.